And welcome everybody to the AFC West preview. We're going to be covering everyone in this division from Mahomes to Herbert. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe as always. We are keep gaining subscribers. I'm very excited in the way that we are going. Keep it up. Thank you to those of you that shared on social media. The last video, I know some people had to have shared on social media because we had like three times more views than what we normally get. So thank you to those of you that shared. Several of you must have shared on social media. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Keep that up. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any fantasy football questions or comments, put them in the comment section and I will respond to them on the next video. We do not have any fantasy questions today. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Joe Salazar, stopped by and said, Good info, Andrew. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I'm hoping to actually get him to come on sometime, uh, and we can have kind of we can kind of both do one of the shows. Uh, so that'll be exciting when we can do that. But today we are going to get into the AFC West. Like I said, we're going division by division right now. We've already covered the NFC West and the AFC East. Today to the AFC West, we all know who's probably going to win this division, but we're going to start at the bottom with a team that I'm very low on this year, very low on, the Los Angeles Chargers. I have them going 3-13, and and here's why. With Tyrod Taylor at quarterback, this offense is not going to put him in a position to succeed. He likes route runners. He likes little guys that are going to get open. He doesn't like throwing into traffic. Now, Anthony Lynn, when he was when they were both with each other in Bolt and uh, Buffalo, you know that was where Tyrod Taylor had some success, and I think Tyrod Taylor is actually a really good quarterback. But the problem is, is that this offense is based off of 50-50 balls with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry, these guys that are going to go up and get the balls. Terry Taylor's not going to, he isn't that kind of quarterback. So that's going to, I think, I'm afraid that's going to cause some problems down the road in this offense. And Justin Herbert, like I told you guys throughout the draft process, I was not a big fan on. He's, you know, he's a tall guy who throws the ball. He doesn't have anything super special. He he can run, but he doesn't have great instincts or awareness for to be an NFL starting quarterback. Um, the arm is good, but there's just nothing that wows me. There, he's missing that it factor that some of these other special quarterbacks like Jordan Love and Tua that they have that they can just make plays when they need to. I haven't seen that from Herbert. Uh, so I think Tyrod Taylor is probably the best bet at quarterback for at least this year. Uh, but I just don't think that the offense is fit to his strengths. So I have them going 3-13. and 13. For fantasy advice, I'm going to say avoid Mike Williams at all costs. We've talked about him before. If there's anyone that you want to draft in this offense, it would probably be Austin Eckler just because he's going to get passes out of the backfield. Probably be a lot of check down passes from Tyrod Taylor. And maybe if I'm underestimating them, maybe they won't be behind as much as I'm thinking. So Austin Eckler is maybe a late second, early third round pick if he starts to drop in your league. Uh, that could be a reasonable... Uh, fantasy pick, but overall, I'm just avoiding the Chargers as a whole in fantasy this year, uh, just because I'm not expecting much. Uh, the Chargers defense, if you want to give them a shot in fantasy, I don't think they're going to be that good, but they're going to get sacks because you have Nick Bosa and you have Melvin Ingram. Uh, so that is all really we're going to cover with, with the Chargers. Not a whole lot else to cover. We've talked about them a lot and a lot of different perspectives in fantasy. To the Las Vegas Aledas. John Gruden and Mike Mayock, they've actually assembled a decent team on paper. Uh, had another fairly solid draft, a uh, couple headed scratching picks. I don't think very many people saw Damon Arnett going in the first round. I thought there was a chance he could go late first, but I didn't see him going with a 19th pick. That was a little bit high for me. A couple other surprising picks. But last year, uh, pick out of Eastern Michigan, Max Crosby was a beast. He had an excellent rookie year, and if Cleland Farrell can come around and become a little bit better pass rusher, they could actually have a really decent pass rush. On the inside, you still have Mo Hurst, who's uh, add some nice things, uh, third-year pro out of Michigan. Uh, Jonathan Abram will hopefully come back healthy. Uh, they brought in Corey Littleton to help out the linebacking core that was really atrocious last year. And then on the offensive line, I uh, still have Colton Miller, who is continually getting better. Um, they they still have some pieces there. I still have Incognito. Uh, 
then tight end Darren Waller is the guy who really broke out last year. None of us really saw him in fantasy. A lot of people had him as a pegged as a sleeper, uh, but nobody saw him really having quite the success he did last year. I'm not sure if he's going to quite duplicate that this year, just because Henry Ruggs is there. There's other weapons in the offense now. Maybe Hunter Renfro even gets involved. Um, but I believe it was either Sixth Sense Sports or Fantasy Spartan who really likes Henry Ruggs um, in fantasy as a late round sleeper. You know, go for it if you think that's the case. My fantasy advice is take a chance on Tyrell Williams late round. I do not know why this guy is not getting drafted higher. I actually, I, I'm I, when in the later rounds, I generally draft younger players, rookies that could burst onto the scene. But Tyrell Williams is a guy I would take it with 14th, 15th round pick. I, I can't believe that this guy is going this low. I know he had the injury last year, but before the injury, he was a touchdown machine. And he's going to have a better rapport with Carr than what Ruggs will have, and maybe even better than what Waller will have. Um, he's still probably going to start off the year as the number one receiver. Henry Ruggs still has that ankle injury. So I think a lot of people are discounting Tyrell Williams. He's bringing really good value, and he's being underdrafted on pretty much any fantasy website you go to. So take a chance on Tyrell Williams as a late-round pick. He could bring really solid depth as a receiver. Can probably be a good flex starter, possibly even wide receiver too, on a given week where there's an easy matchup. So for the Las Vegas Raiders, my record prediction, I'm going to go 8-8. Eight and eight. I thought about giving them a 9-7 and seven record possible uh, wild card team. I'm just... You got to fit everyone in there, okay? You know, you got to have the same amount of wins as you do losses when you do these kind of predictions. Uh, so I'm going to say 8-8. Eight and eight. Derek Carr, I'm just not sure he can take them very far if they do make it into the playoffs. Um, and that's why I'm just not super high on the Raiders. I think there is some potential here. Uh, there's a lot of exciting pieces. Josh Jacobs is a really exciting running back. Um, we'll see if they get him involved in the passing game. They brought in Lynn Bowden through the draft. I uh, had some off-field problems. Uh, they still have Jalen Richard. So there's pieces out of the backfield they'll use as pass catchers. Hunter Renfro, we already mentioned in the slot, a guy who a lot of people are really high on this year as a late-round flyer in fantasy. I'm not as much. But to each his own, I would rather draft Tyrell Williams over Hunter Renfro 10 times out of 10. But Hunter Renfro is a guy who really did break onto the scene at the end of last year, getting a lot of catches in PPR leagues. Renfro may be a guy you want to take. The Denver Broncos are a team that I really do like. I think this could be a 10-6, and 11-5 team. I have them going 9-7, and seven, but I think Drew Locke uh, could, is really this year's break, breakout quarterback. I liked him coming out. I was at the scouting combine when he uh, performed. had a really good showing overall. Um, has some good athleticism. He can run with it. He knows how to make plays on the run. Sorry, I'm yawning so much. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but I'm but I'm really excited about this offense because Mike Munchak, as a Steelers fan, I love Mike Munchak. Uh, he is the best offensive line coach in the league by far, in my opinion. Uh, he knows how to coach those guys. We'll see if he can do something uh, with Garrett Bowles, the first round, what looks to be bust at this point. Just hasn't been able to get together. Uh, I believe they brought in Graham Glasgow at guard. May play a little bit of center as well. So that's going to help the interior of the offensive line. They brought in Melvin Gordon to go with Philip Lindsay. So the running backs are going to be really solid. Don't leave out Royce Freeman as well. They have a very crowded backfield. Um, and they've really surrounded Drew Luck with weapons. Albert Okwabunum, Noah Fant, Cortland Sutton's still there, and then they bring in Jerry Judy and K.J. Hamler through the draft. And we've talked about Jerry Judy is in fantasy, but we haven't talked a whole lot about K.J. Hamler. I think on any other offseason, we'd probably be talking about Hamler just because of the upside that he brings is that deep threat and across the middle just being able to take any pass to the house. Uh, but that's another thing for another day we'll touch on some other time. But I have 9-7 and seven for the Broncos, and my fantasy advice is take some of these late-round sleeper Broncos. Okay, um, I'm not as big on Noah Fant this year, uh, but in Dynasty Leagues, Albert Okwabunum's a guy you may want to take, especially in Extended Leagues. But in Drew Locke is a guy who could be a starting quarterback for your team. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that. I really think he could end up being a top-10 fantasy quarterback. Take a chance on Drew Locke in the later rounds, uh, and he could come up big for you, especially in two quarterback leagues, and you need a backup, you're going to draft a third quarterback, but you're not going to take one high. 
take Drew Locke. I think he's going to really pay off for you down the line. Um, Jerry Judy is a guy that could probably bring you good value if he starts to drop um, on NFL.com. He's falling sometimes into you know 14th, 15th round. So uh, that brings really good value. Justin Jefferson is going ahead of him, I think. Uh, C.D. Lamb is going ahead of him, which I think is outrageous. I think Jerry Judy is a better receiver than C.D. Lamb, and I also think that C.D. Lamb's, uh, because of the, all the other weapons in Dallas, may not get as big of a target share as Jerry Judy will. Um, but again, you have to be careful with these rookies this year. This is probably not a good year to draft a bunch of rookies. Uh, that was something that's actually sunk my team last year. I drafted too many. I was drafting uh, Daryl Henderson, uh, Josh Jacobs, drafted a couple of rookie receivers, drafted Kyler Murray. And, you know, some of them did pan out, uh, but not enough. And it, it, I ended up making the playoffs as the fourth seed in my main league. Oh, excuse me. And it did not work out. Okay, it just did not work out. Um, overall, there's, you know, you, it takes so long. I started off the season really slow. I started to pick up steam towards the end of the year when Kyler Murray started to break out. It just did not work overall. Um, but I'm going to say 9-7 and seven for the Broncos. I think that's a really reasonable record. I'm really excited to see what happens with this team in the future. Finishing this off with Kansas City Chiefs, I'm going 13-3. and three. Patrick Mahomes, the Ferrari, he is still tops, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody has been able to top the Ferrari, Patrick Mahomes, as of yet. He is still the best quarterback in the league by far. We saw the money he got, which I think is crazy, but if anyone deserves it, it's him. Um, I think he's definitely going to make uh, the Chiefs a very... Uh, you're going to make the Chiefs a team that everyone needs to worry about for the next decade. Um, they're going to probably win multiple Super Bowls if uh, nothing changes. Um, but I'm just really, really excited to see what happens uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs in the future. You still have all those pieces. My little bit of fantasy advice I'm going to give you today is... This one's hard because Kansas City, you have all their guys are getting drafted really high. Um, so I'm going to... If there's anyone I would say avoid, it would probably be Sammy Watkins. Um, I've given up on him in fantasy. Um, McCole Hardman, if you're in kick in leagues that give you kick return points, uh, I would definitely take a chance on him. Um, but I guess I would go with the defense here. With the Kansas City defense, take a chance on the Kansas City defense. I think they could be a really good starting defense for your fantasy team. This was a really hard division to figure out fantasy advice for. Um, but hopefully those can be a help to you. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Give me those questions in the comment section. I want to answer them on the next show. Uh, if you have any fancy questions, just normal football questions, anything, put it in the comment section. I'll answer it on the next video. Thank you all for tuning in. Tune in, tell a friend, and subscribe. Don't forget to share on social media. It did wonders for our last video. Let's hope it does this for the next one as well. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.